one of the things I love to do on this channel is to share resources with you that I have found. And today I have another one to let you see inside of. Hi and welcome, thanks for joining me today. If you're new here, I am a second generation homeschool mom to three. I have a kindergartner who's doing kind of kindergarten first grade work, I have a preschooler and I have a little toddler running around and making trouble. Um, so today I'm going to show you a science curriculum that has been intriguing me for a while and I really wanted to get my hands on it and look at it. So I reached out to the publishing company and asked them if they would send me a copy to share with you and they consented. So I'm really excited to be doing this today. So I want to shout out a big thank you to Brand Builders for sending me this so that I could share it with you. The science that I'm talking about is this Science in the Ancient World book by Dr. J. Weil. Now, this is one of a set of five books, um, and they are for ages or grades K through six. And the books are Science in the Beginning, Science in the Ancient World. So this is the second book. And then we have Science in the During the Scientific Revolution, Science in the Age of Reason, and Science During the Industrial Age. So a set of five. And while I said these are for grades K through six, there is a caveat to that. These are meant to be able to be done in family style. So they do recommend that you wait until your oldest child is at least in, I think, second or third grade, um, because they really won't get their full potential out of this until then. So if you have a third grader, they would say, you know, start with your third grader and your younger children, do them all together. That's great. But if you your oldest is in first, kindergarten, maybe even second grade, then they're just not going to get the full potential out of this text and they would recommend waiting. So with that said, we do not plan to use this this year with my kindergarten or next year with my first grader. Um, we're going to do something else until they're a little older, um, but I'm going to be holding on tightly to this because it is a high contender for what we may do in late elementary, early middle school. Um, who knows down the road? I can't say that far out, but it's definitely one that I am strongly considering. So with that being said, all, all the books in this series are written at the same grade level. Um, they tried not to like progress in grade level as they went through the series. They're all meant to be kind of equal. And as such, um, you do not need to read them in order. Now, there's something to be said for reading them in order, and I think you would get a better founding overview of the whole thing if you do. So it would be recommended, but not required. Um, they're not written in progressing age grade, age grade, um, level. So that's one reason, but also the author did really try to put in any missing information that you might have learned in previous levels um, in the actual books so that if your child is really interested in one time period in particular, or you're trying to go with something that like matches with your history, you can do that. You do not have to start at the beginning. So I really appreciate that. Um, I am really excited about this for a couple of reasons. One, I think the idea of merging history and science is so cool. I feel like often we see them as two separate studies. We have science as its own study, history as its own study. And I think bringing them together into something a little more cohesive is a brilliant idea, um, especially for someone like me who wants to use a classical method of history where we want to do, you know, ancients, uh, medieval, some uh, early modern and late modern times. I think this would be really fun to integrate with that alongside my curriculum. Now there would be the there's five books in this series and ancient history only has or um, classical history only has four cycles generally. So there would be a little bit of uh, shimmying around to make it work. Um, but I think it'd be great to do alongside and really connect them and learn. And another reason I like kind of the, this approach to science is as a race, a human race, we didn't just boom, have all this stuff. We really did progress. We learned, had this discovery and then this discovery and then this, and it built on itself. And so following that progression of discoveries and learning a little bit more about the scientists themselves and not just the science, I think is really cool. I think, especially if you have a child who loves history, this could be a really, really big hit. So Without further ado, um, I want to turn the camera around. I want to let you see inside and kind of get a feel for what it looks like inside the book. So this curriculum has two pieces to it. It has the actual textbook, and then it has this helps and hints booklet that we will talk about in just a minute. And I'll let you see inside that as well. I love that these are hardbound. I think they're actually quite attractive overall on the outside. So when we open this up, We start with a bit of an introduction and a little how to use this book summary. And here you'll notice that there's a question and answer service. So they have a site that you can go to if you have any questions that you can actually ask the author or the publishers, I'm not sure which one, and they will get back to you with answers, which I think is a super useful service, um, as well as they have on here um, lists of questions from other people's 
that they have already answered that you can reference for your use, which is again, super helpful. It has a section on experiments talking about you should always have adult supervision and just kind of this is the idea behind them. And then they have experiment supply lists. Um, it's broken into two different ways of listing. He has it broken down into the supplies that are a little bit more unique or harder to come across or less likely to have in your home. And that is this list and they're broken up by unit. And then he has these lists, which are all of the supplies needed. Um, and again, they're broken by unit. So part one is lesson one through 15. Part two is lesson 16 through 30. And he doesn't reference which are necessary for which lessons, but if you want to assemble everything for this unit of your science, this is everything needed. The red are for lessons that are additional challenge lessons. They're not required lessons in this book, but if you want to do them, they're there, but you can totally complete this course without them. So the ones in red are for those lessons. And he just continues with all the list, which I really appreciate having them all up front. I appreciate having them by unit. So it's a little easier to see and all the way through and to lesson 90. So those are all your supplies. And then we have the table of contents, again, broken up in those same kind of parts as the supplies were broken up into these parts. Again, the red are the additional challenge lessons, not necessary, but there if you want to. Um, including the challenge lessons, there are a total of 90 lessons. And I believe without them, there would be, um, well, there's three per unit and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, so 18 challenge units, which means there, there would be only 72 actual lessons if you chose to skip those. So as you're thinking through, oh, coordinating it with your yearly plan for your homeschool, that is helpful information to have. And then we jump right into it. So each lesson is not very long. So it has any notes to the teacher is highlighted in yellow, and then you have the main text. This is your reading. And then here we have the experiment and the experiments are always blocked out in blue. It always tells you what you will need and it gives you the instructions. And after reading several chapters, the instructions always seem pretty well laid out. I wouldn't have any trouble following them. And then after that, you do a little bit more reading and you have your lesson review, which is broken up into three categories. You have your younger students, your older students, and then the oldest students. So depending on what level your child is at, you can do re the review with them accordingly. Um, and so this enables it to be more family style. Each chapter has the experiment in the middle of the lesson. So you see we have reading, an experiment, and then some additional reading. And each chapter seems to be pretty much three pages, including the experiment and the lesson review. So they're not terribly long, which I appreciate. And from the ones that I read, they seem to be pretty clear. Um, and good at focusing on one simple concept and then building on it. Um, it really doesn't try to cover a lot of concepts in each chapter. They really focus on just the one and understanding one, which I appreciate. But I think the idea between the idea behind the experiment being you read a little bit about the idea, the scientists that you're going to learn about, and then you do an experiment that really demonstrates the concept. And then he continues to talk about it with the student now having the understanding of the concept through their experiment to really go a little bit more of a deeper and more solid understanding, which I actually like. Um, I'm not a big experiment person, but the experiments that I read and I read four or five were not real challenging, did not require a lot of unique items, did not seem like they would take a lot of time for the majority of experiments. So I think even for someone like myself who isn't a big experiment person, I don't think those would be a big challenge. And I do like the way that they really demonstrate the concept before you continue reading so that your student has oh, something hands-on to grasp about what they're reading. And it's not just all theoretical, but there's actually something physical for them to um, grasp. The inside, my probably my main critique to the inside is I don't feel like the inside is absolutely beautiful or eye-catching. It does have color illustrations, which I appreciate. But as far as that, I feel like it, it isn't the most pretty science that I've seen, but the content I like. Here you'll see that they notify you in the teacher, to the teacher that the next lesson contains an experiment that needs to sit for a few days. So generally they give you a heads up if you're going to have an experiment that will need to be started in advance. So overall, I, I like it. I think this could work really, really well. Um, it really depends on what type of writing you and your children enjoy, but I didn't feel like it was complicated or use concepts that I couldn't follow or that a child couldn't follow. Um, the one thing you would need to know about this is that 
it is religious. So while the chapters I read were not such that if you were reading with your child, you couldn't edit and eliminate some of those. If your child's reading it by themselves, and I did not read the entire science book, so I don't know about all the chapters, um, it is written from a religious perspective. So you would need to know that. Then along with this book is the Helps and Hints book, which is basically a um, answer key for your reviews. So when you come into your lessons at the end of the lesson, it has these review sections. Um, and this basically gives you the answers expected for the youngest, the oldest, older and oldest, and in the format that he's kind of looking for it in. And so this whole beginning part is all your review answers, which may seem a little basic, but if you're not reading the lessons with your child, it would be really helpful to know what answers they're wanting. And even if you are, um, the younger answers I feel like would be fairly easy, but some of these oldest questions were actually quite challenging depending on the level of your child. And I feel like having the answer here, if your child doesn't quite understand what they're wanting, would be really helpful for you in guiding your child to that answer. So after we have these lesson review helps and hints, then there is a section that has, where is it? It's got tests. Um, they are not required. There is no schedule for testing in here that I could see. This is totally up to you if you want them, um, but they are a page long front and back roughly, or a page to a page and a half, I guess. Um, and they are not every chapter. Well, I guess the schedule will be that these are for lessons 31 through 36. So if you wanted to test as they do give you what the tests are for, um, but just very simple test, mostly open questions, a few multiple choice. So if you want to do that, you can, but those are not required. And then even further back, we have the test answers. So that is what this book is. And then in the very back, there is an appendix that has, I think these are probably for an activity in one of the experiments or lessons. So this is a very simple, basic book, but it's also quite inexpensive. And I think that having those review answers and questions would be really, really helpful um, if you have an older student that you need to coach, or if you are not planning to read these in the entirety with your students, I think that could be very, very useful. So that is the inside of the book. Hopefully that was helpful in kind of just seeing how it's laid out, um, how much reading there is, what kind of, you know, experiments are like within the, the text. Um, and hopefully that's helpful for you to see. Um, I do have a couple of things I did want to mention. One is that with all the assignment, um, all the experiments in the book, sorry, um, it does look like a lot of materials to prep. Sometimes that can be a little overwhelming for us as parents. So I do know that there's a company, I think through Rainbow, Rainbow Resources, that does sell the experiment boxes with all of the supplies in the boxes. Now, just so you know, those supplies are not laid out by lesson, um, but they do have them all in one box in one place. So if you wanted to not go to the hassle of assembling all your materials yourself, you could just buy that box, have it on hand, and then prior to your units or your lessons, you could go pull out the pieces you need. So there is that. On the Brian Builders website, I believe there's also a downloadable link for student notebooks that you can use. I don't believe they're required, but there's for the older and oldest set of students. They have those on there, so you can go look at those. And I'll link both that um, experiment kit box and those notebooks down below so you can see that. And another just quick side note, it's not really this curriculum, but this publisher, the Brian Builders, also does have high school science. And I really like that because if we decided to go with this and we were really enjoying it and worked well, to have to go find another science for high school. So it's not part of this like science through time set, um, but they do have physics, biology, chemistry, all for the high school level written by the same author in a similar style. And so um, I, I just really like that if you found a middle school science that you liked and you enjoyed, that you could then just naturally progress into high school with your student kind of knowing what to expect, already knowing that the science works and that it's a good um, solid curriculum and not have to go find a new science at that point. So that's just kind of a little side bit, which I appreciate. Maybe not everybody does, but for me, that's something that kind of when I'm looking at science, I'm like, oh, is this something I'm going to have to trade out of later? Or can we just kind of naturally progress with this curriculum? So I like that. Um, if you have any questions on what I've said, any questions on the material that I can answer, uh, any comments, if you've used this material and like it, um, please comment below. Let me know all of those. And thank you for joining me today and go check out this curriculum and see if it's something that you would be interested in.